Welcome to Spokane Talks, where you'll find the latest in community news, views, and conversation. Now, join your host to hear what Spokane's talking about. Welcome to Spokane Talks on Fox 28. Three great guests today. One is Bobby Enslow with Indaba. Here's a guy that started out, opened one coffee shop, and has five of them now. A great story of a small business. I think you'll enjoy that. Then Clyde Hawsey and Tom Lenhart from Avista will talk about gadgets for your home. It's a good one to watch. It might even save you some money. And then Brady Magruder sits down with a high school senior from Lewis and Clark High. And that's Josh Heckman, and he's recycling. What's he recycling? Well, stay tuned and find out. Here at Creative Music Learning Center, we are dedicated to your learning no matter where you are on your journey. Whether you are a beginner, a casual player, or need some brushing up on technique, we are here for you. When you begin lessons with us, our teachers take the time to understand what kind of learner you are and how we can help you further your knowledge, offering a variety of instruments including piano, guitar, voice, violin, and more. We are here and ready to get started with you. Here at River Ridge Hardware Garden Center, where we have all the plants and flowers that will spruce up your yard. From the lilacs for Spokane's Lilac City, to awesome hanging baskets, and pots that you can actually put the hanging baskets in. Here at River Ridge Hardware, we want to help you set up your landscape needs. Neighbors helping neighbors at River Ridge Hardware. Well, welcome to the Business Talks uh, segment. Kent Adams here and Bobby Inslow, owner of Indaba Coffee. And what, in the last year or so, you brought your wife in. So it's really a family affair now, isn't it? It is, yeah. She left her job of 12 years to make it a true family business. Yeah. And we live and work in West Central and we have a couple other shops downtown. Right. And You yeah. started in West Central, right? Mm -hmm. In what, 2009, do I have the year right? 2009, started in West Central. Yeah. My uh, pastor planted the seed of, hey, you should move back and uh, <laughs> start a coffee shop. You have shop to listen and, to your pastor, you know, once you know, in a while, he's right. You, you know, know it, it took a year for me me to get there did, did it. Uh, but it you know and some experience in south africa and things but it's you know i would looking back it's been like the most phenomenal ride and what and, was you know. what was the turning point to decide to actually do it you know he planted the seed it was a year later but what finally said i'm going to do it i think for me it was just an opportunity to give back to my hometown okay. you know and and seeing how um and, and and really just a shift in my own philosophy of living for others, you okay, know? Okay, yes. And, uh, you know, I, my career path was very, <laughs> looking back, was very selfish. You yes. Know? And it was very, like... And what I'm, was that? Because... It was, you know, I'm not going to shout out a particular career path being bad, but... Right, right. You know, right. I, my but mindset... But it wasn't for you. Yeah, my mindset was I want to make as much money as possible. Right, right. And oh, I'll give back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I never really thought of like, what if I could turn my career into giving back? Yes. And and what if I could create something and that actually gives make back? a living? And yeah, yeah, you know. And why can't I do it now? You know, with what I do. And right. so, I actually fell in love with coffee through that process. You oh. know, just the ability to have a positive impact in a neighborhood and even just people on a daily basis. And then, uh, yeah, growing it to create jobs and equip people and. Um, and then we do give back a meal for every bag of coffee we sell. You know, we, okay. we do give back in those ways sure, too. Sure. But it's really creating this movement of wanting to see Spokane become a better place. Yeah. You know? You've gone from the one coffee shop to the five. How many people are you employing now? Now we're around 35 people, yeah. you know, on average. And Are you finding the kind of people you want? Yeah, I think we have a unique process that we, we put our values out there up front right you know here's our core values love people love coffee right and it attracts those like-minded people right okay you know and you have that through the whole process now we have a whole organization full of people that want to just love on that, people that's neat know? that's neat because you can really make a difference when someone comes in having a hectic day like i did yesterday and and actually was at your shop at yeah, one o'clock yeah. and your people well, people were so fun and friendly and all that and it just took the stress away so i appreciate yeah. it. we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back and talk about a little bit more about indaba after this here at river ridge hardware garden center where we have all the plants and flowers 
that will spruce up your yard from the lilacs for Spokane's Lilac City to awesome hanging baskets and pots that you can actually put the hanging baskets in. Here at River Ridge Hardware, we want to help you set up your landscape needs. Neighbors helping neighbors at River Ridge Hardware. Welcome back, Bobby Enslow from Andaba, who really part of your charter, and I mean that's comes from within, right. is to give back to people and to help people and to develop a community. You've done that in uh, West Central. You've you're doing that in Kendall Yards, which right. is great, and downtown. Mm -hmm. Your place downtown was just fun and exciting, and and uh, full of spirit and everything else. Good. Yesterday, I enjoyed that. Okay. Um, what 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 drives you to do that? Um, I think ultimately, you know, uh, this is my hometown. This is where I okay. was raised, yeah. and and there's just this deeper sense or deeper calling, you yeah. know, to want to to do more, to give back, and you know, my faith plays a big part of that. Okay. You know, I, you know, I I'm a Christian. I follow, you know, the, that, and so that just really inspired me to to really love on people well, yes. and um, just to grow. The prosperity of the city, you know? yes, yes, and and it's been cool to see Spokane over the last ten years do right. that and transform. And you know, there's obviously a lot of work to do. Right. You know, our West Central location, the original location, is actually across the street from one of the emergency shelters. Okay. And so we're still actively aware of you know this is there's a lot of work to do you yes. know to help our yeah. neighbors you know and. Um, we do our part by trying to employ people, equip them, give them jobs. Yeah. Uh, we're actually working on creating a job training program, you oh, know, nice. and try to give people some soft skills. And and so I feel like, you know, ultimately seeing people given a second chance, seeing those people kind of rise up and make something of themselves, and that really gets me inspired and and charged up, you yeah. know. And There's so. a good coffee community here, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you, you would think first thing I would think of you is is okay there's competition out there right but there is that working together as well to, right to raise everyone's boats if you will yeah and, and and help educate about coffee right yeah absolutely the camaraderie around coffee has definitely evolved from like the the rat race of the 90s you know yeah, where yeah. everyone's fighting Starbucks or to be the next Starbucks yeah and it's become kind of like craft beer. There's a there's a camaraderie, okay. a sharing yeah. of knowledge, uh, that idea of raising rising tide, right. you know. And it's been fun seeing that in Spokane and and just connecting with different people around town. And we have just a few and, seconds left, but you're going to be doing something this fall. What is it? I'll be teaching at Whitworth. All right. Yeah, I, uh, leadership course down there, and it's going to be another way to give back and hopefully empower others to do the same and and be better leaders. So. Wow. Well, you're a good example of in business and in giving back and engaging your employees and reaching out to the community, we should all strive to be a Bobby Enslow. So, <laughs> so you're doing a good thing. You can pay me later. No, uh, Bobby, thank you, thank you for what you do. Okay? Appreciate it. It's, it's great. Thanks for watching. Clyde Hawsey, host of our House to Home program, sits down with Tom Leinhart from Avista to talk about gadgets that will help improve your home. Here at Creative Music Learning Center, we are dedicated to your learning no matter where you are on your journey. Whether you are a beginner, a casual player, or need some brushing up on technique, we are here for you. When you begin lessons with us, our teachers take the time to understand what kind of learner you are and how we can help you further your knowledge. Offering a variety of instruments including piano, guitar, voice, violin, and more. We are here and ready to get started with you. Welcome to another House to Home. I'm Clyde Hawsey and joining me today is Tom Linhard with Avista, energy efficient engineer, and he has some great ideas that we can apply in our own home at relatively inexpensive dollars. Right, Tom? You bet. Can you fill us in what you've got here? Sure. I brought in a couple of devices here uh, that are low cost, but really, really can help your home. Right. If you have some can lights, uh, and sometimes people have can lights that are on the, 
on an angle, like uh, they're on a ceiling going up sideways. This particular can light has uh, the ability to change the turret, so you can point that can. You can actually adjust it you where can, you're sitting, right? Yeah, you can point it down. Uh, and these can lights are starting to be less and less money all the time, so good thing to take a look at. And you don't have to change the bulbs as often either because a lot of can lights are up high where you need a special ladder. So these are really good, folks. You have to use those. Then I like to tell people about smart strips. These are uh, the dumbest of the smart strips, <laughs> but they're, uh, they work quite well. This is for either a computer or a video where you'd put the TV into this control plug, and then you put the things that you want to shut off when the TV shuts off over in the green. And then in the red, you can plug in the things that you want to stay hot all the time, like your cable or your DVR. And that way, when your TV goes off, all the other things that you don't want to be on and use in energy when you don't need them will go off as well. Because they're all tied together to the TV, and that's what Correct. you want to Same is true of a computer. You put your main computer on here. You put the sound system printers on this sure. over here. And then maybe you put your cable internet mm -hmm. on one of mm -hmm. these. Mm -hmm. And so when your computer goes into shutdown mode, it drops enough that this recognizes it and it'll shut down all the other. I really think that's a very smart strip, okay? It's okay. not a dumb smart right. strip. This is it's the a dumbest smart, one. <laughs> smart strip. Yeah. Okay, what else do you have there, Tom? Well, I just wanted to show people that in the um, libraries locally in the Northwest, in both uh, uh, Eastern Washington and North Idaho, we've put uh, the these kilowatt meters in so if you're concerned about how much something's taking right you can plug it into this device and read the instructions find the instructions online when you get your device and it'll tell you how much energy that would take it how much it's taken instantaneously and it'll tell you how much it would take in a year if you were to run it all year long like that and that's all down to dollars and cents then when you add them all up right correct if you put in you have to you do have to put in how much you pay per kilowatt hour which means you might have to go to your your bill and look that up uh, but anyway that way you'll know okay very good you just got one minute left what do you want to talk about I just want to tell you that if you want to know more about residential and even small commercial because a lot of our smaller businesses really operate a lot like a residence in terms of how the energy is used uh, we have a energy use and savings guide that's available for you at myavista.com and so you could come get the digital version of this guide and look through it and see if there's anything that you can do to help yourself okay tom we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back here folks again avista has brought a lot of information for us so come back and join us just in a few minutes here here at river ridge hardware garden center where we have all the plants and flowers that will spruce up your yard. From the lilacs for Spokane's Lilac City, to awesome hanging baskets, and pots that you can actually put the hanging baskets in. Here at River Ridge Hardware, we wanna help you set up your landscape needs. Neighbors helping neighbors at River Ridge Hardware. Welcome back, folks. I'm Clyde Hawsey with House to Home, and again, I'm Tom Linhart with Avista Energy Efficient uh, Operations at Avista. Tom, we've been talking about ways how to save money that on the existing system, but I wanted to share with everybody, sometimes it's a point of identifying and putting a new system in. We got just a, a couple minutes, Tom. Talk to us what are the real important things that when you're, you should be asking questions. Well, I just want to keep in mind that when you're buying something, whether it's a furnace or, or a pair of shoes, you should be a good shopper. Right. And uh, so just because something's big and you need it really badly doesn't mean you should take the first one off the truck. Uh, in fact, I believe that a, a homeowner should probably go through their different large appliances and say, what am I going to do if I need a new one of these? And have it in your mind how to replace that yep. in the first place. Then when you're about ready to do it, I always just advise people to get more than one bid. And then when you get more than one bid, make sure that they split out the cost of the materials from the labor. Right. So that you will always be able to look at two or three different contractors and know which one's giving you the best deal. Well, you know, Tom, and, and I've shared this story with you and I'm sharing with you folks. I've had my system done uh, at my own home. I spent almost $10,000. And the point being, I... 
I try to understand it and I research as much as I can and we end up, we don't have all the answers all the time. And so whoever you choose is, is how successful it's going to be. And we were fortunate, but we found out there was a little problem, a, a glitch. We had a high energy heat pump put in, but they came back and they corrected it. And not every time will you find the right contract that's going to do that. Ask for referrals, ask for listings of people who have been satisfied. Ask. Ask questions is what we're trying to say. Am I right, Tom? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And there's nothing different about your home than many other things that your friends and you work on together. So see if your friends have done this too and, and ask their help. Well, and that's one of the things they even brought along here today to even take a look at is, see, your heating bills will just go up and down according to the season. And here again, this is an example. I'm on Inland Power, the same as Avista. They can help you out. They can give you these answers. It'll make you a better buyer at that particular point. So with that being said, Tom, ask questions. Any other uh, words of, of, of the why, shall we say, from well, Avista? I think that was a really good point, whether it's us, uh, Inland, Kootenai, Clearwater, regardless of where you're sitting when you're hearing this and who your utility company is, you should ask them for help if you think you can get it because many of them give the same kind of help Avista gives. Folks, you've heard it from the experts. Again, thank you to Avista. We appreciate it. Come back and join us next time on House to Home, and Avista will be right there with us. Thank you again. With our desire to highlight youth in our community, Brady Magruder, host of Youth Spotlight, sits now with Josh Heckman, a senior at Lewis and Clark High School to talk about recycling, recycling food. Hello everybody, welcome to Spokane Talks. This is Youth Spotlight. I'm here with Josh Heckman from Lewis and Clark High School. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Good. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So you are a senior going into Lewis and Clark High School. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, so like you said, I'm a senior at Lewis and Clark High School and I started a food recovery program called Reproduce 81 there and we expanded to Shadow Park towards the end of last year and now looking for more schools but we recover food that students would otherwise throw away um, and we distribute that food to students in need at that school. Wow that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, Reproduce 81, why don't you tell me a little bit more about how it works. How did you, how did you get it started? Pretty okay much? so my, towards the end of my sophomore year in high school I came to my counselor with the idea I'm um, just seeing how much food was wasted and I'm um, realizing like there's a better way to like to take that food and put it to good use so um, came to her with the idea and just met with the right people, met with um, Councilwoman Kate Burke and she kind of guided me um, in the right direction for funding, um, who to talk to, who to connect with just to get it going and um, talked with our Director of Nutrition Services and kind of just had some hurdles to jump through to get it going but luckily um, towards the beginning of, the of my junior year in high school we had it fully started, um, their food recovery was happening, we were also providing volunteer opportunities to the members as well so yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. That, it's, I think that's also great how a student of your age, and you're 17 years old, right? Yeah. 17, uh, to be able to speak out and to reach out to councilwomen and people like Kate Berg who can help you out with that. People yeah. your age who can have a voice. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's been really great to me, and I've, I know I've, like, like, been lucky to, like, have that support and um, had the ability to have someone as high up as Kate in the city to um, help me out with this, but also, like, really been amazing to see like I can take my passion and use it to help my community so if like other students and other people have a certain passion and they want to like use it to benefit the community I think there are people to reach out to who can help that and make that happen. Right that's yeah. great so real quickly why don't you describe how the process works. Okay so we recover food from students um, so non-perishables right now mm -hmm. in bins set up throughout the school and throughout the cafeteria um, and we distribute that to students in need at that school. Um, we also provide different volunteer opportunities. So we have partnerships with House of Charity, Second Harvest and stuff, and we allow our members to volunteer in the community as well. That's really cool. Yeah. I think that's also great because there's a lot of people who uh, throw away those food and then there's more people who would rather eat that food. Yeah, you know? exactly. And it's been great to have just our, our school in particular, like, have people coming together to help fight waste and feed the students in need. That's really awesome. Cool. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll talk about more about how people can get involved in the future of Reproduce 81. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back to Spokane Talks. This is Youth Spotlight. I'm your host, Brady Magruder, and I'm here with Josh Heckman from Lewis and Clark High School. So before the break, we talked about Reproduce 81 and how the process works, how you got it started. And so I'm wondering now about what the future is for Reproduce 81. Uh, so definitely keep going and keep expanding and keep helping to end food waste and feed students in need. Um, I think every school in the state and the nation should have a program similar to Reproduce 81 because it's such a similar, it's just an easy, sorry, it's such an easy process to implement, but it has such a huge impact on these students. So the goal is just to keep growing and keep expanding and to keep feeding students in need. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, earlier we talked about how um, you are finding new ways to make sure that food isn't wasted. Like a lot of kids would want to throw away uh, certain vegetables and certain things that are on their plate uh, versus when you mix them together with, with the foods or something like that, you find it a lot easier for kids to be able to eat it and not necessarily worry about it. Mm -hmm. Like for me, that's with mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms. I'm not a fan of mushrooms. But when my mom mixes them in with spaghetti or something like that and I don't necessarily see them, I don't even really taste them at all. Mm -hmm. And I eat them and I still get the added nutritional benefit yeah. from it. Um, so I think like, I know like different cultures have different lunch, school lunches, but I know in America specifically, everything is separated on a tray. Um, and I think that leads to food waste because if I, right. I'm a student, I don't like broccoli, but I see a separate thing of broccoli, I'm not going to eat it. Versus if food is mixed in a stew or a curry and or a soup, like Eastern Asian or Southeast Asian cultures, I think that really eliminates food waste. So going in the future, that's something I want to research and look at is how different cultures growing and cooking practices, especially in school lunches, contribute to food waste. Cool. Yeah. That's really cool. So uh, how can people reach out to you if they want to help expand Reproduce 81? So we have an email. It's reproduce81 at gmail.com. We also have a website um, on Spokane Edible Tree Project. And then you go to programs and you'll find Reproduce 81 there. And you can reach out via the website too. But and then we, also, we also have an Instagram that you can DM me on. It's reproduce81. Um, yeah, and love for people to reach out and expand the program and just even end food waste at their home and help take initiative at their home as well. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm excited to see your program grow. This is very exciting stuff. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Yeah. It was really, really nice me. to meet you. So thank you for tuning into Spokane Talks, and we will catch you next time. Cindy Haval is a freelance columnist and correspondent for The Spokesman Review and author of War Bonds, Love Stories from the Greatest Generation. The view from her porch is usually sunny. Welcome to My Front Porch. This week our setting is my friend Ryan and Robbie's front porch, also the home of Spokane's famous Hobbit House. Every now and then, it's good to ponder one's mortality, to realize how quickly one can slip through this mortal coil. I had one of those moments the last time I went swimsuit shopping. My life didn't flash before my eyes, but all I could think about was how I didn't want to spend my final moments on earth trapped in a department store fitting room. Somehow I'd gotten the halter top of a two-piece bathing suit on backwards and it was darn near impossible to remove without strangling myself. When I finally got free, the clerk tried to sell me a tankini. I thought a tankini was a really big martini but no, it's a full cover swimsuit top. The bottom half featured rows of ruffles. Seriously, I haven't worn ruffles since I was a toddler. As I scoured the store for an attractive, age-appropriate one-piece, I found a lot of skirted suits. I have one of those at home. Once in the water, the skirt floats up and billows around you like a manta ray. And when you emerge from the water, it sucks against your legs like a second skin. No thanks. As I left the mall, I spotted a friend who knows how much I loathe swimsuit shopping. You need a miracle suit, she said. I agreed the situation was dire enough to warrant divine intervention. But it turns out miracle suit is a brand of swimwear and you can order them online. My friend whipped out her phone and showed me a website filled with some fabulous suits. Her phone glowed, bathed in a heavenly halo of light. I went home and immediately ordered a bathing suit. When it arrived, it fit perfectly 
and I'm able to get it off without strangling myself. Miraculous indeed. And that's the view from this front porch. Thanks for watching Spokane Talks on Fox 28. See you next week. Spokane Talks is about you. Give us your feedback and comments at info at spokanetalksmedia.com. Spokane Talks is everywhere you are. Find us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and spokanetalksmedia.com. Spokane Talks is brought to you in part by Rada Paint and River Ridge Hardware. We'll be back next week with the latest news, views, and conversation. Please join us. Here at Creative Music Learning Center, we are dedicated to your learning no matter where you are on your journey. Whether you are a beginner, a casual player, or need some brushing up on technique, we are here for you. When you begin lessons with us, our teachers take the time to understand what kind of learner you are and how we can help you further your knowledge. Offering a variety of instruments including piano, guitar, voice, violin, and more. We are here and ready to get started with you.